Awesome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second of Azar's session with the SUMA team and the residents. Um, just to give you all a quick recap, the MST bounty for SUMA is still open. So if you have submitted an analysis report for MST, please remember that we have extended the deadline to give you a chance to improve it and um, listen to the previous of Azar's session with Enrico to understand what we are looking for. So yeah, and if you've submitted, uh, yeah, you can submit again. And if you haven't submitted, but you want to, you can, but the bounty would be 50% less. And also note that uh, if you had been working in groups previously or with some other person, uh, yeah, it's totally fine. Also, um, I see that there's a very visible confusion on what's required on 28th of February. So on by 28th, you, uh, you need to submit issues on a GitHub repository. I guess by now, every team would have a GitHub repository where you would be submitting your issues. So yeah, there's no need to write a complete report. We'll get to that later in the fellowship, but uh, yeah, you would just have to submit your issues on a GitHub repository. So yeah, that is a, a quick recap. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to ask them in the chat. Or you could raise your hand and just go on. Yep, uh, I see Flying Nobita's hat. So, yeah, go on, Flying Nobita. Um, sorry, yeah, just uh, I, I joined the meeting late, so I wasn't sure if you mentioned it. If, if you did, then I apologize. Um, I just want to clarify that uh, earlier you said with the, uh, the, 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 the bounty on the 28th. Um, so we, we can resubmit it and, um, and it's, it's basically due on the same day as the, the, the report, right? Is that what you said? Yep. As yep. the, um, You're as, right. as the issue, GitHub issues. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Just want to clarify that. Thank you. Okay. And we are allowed to, um, we, we are allowed to uh, 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 either work individually or team up just like uh, uh, we did earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Got it. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. No issues. Uh, looks like we have a question from Igor. Um, Enrico, if you can see the question, do you want me to read it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can see the question. Why have you used begin big uint instead of eaters u two hundred and fifty six for handling numbers? Well, I guess that like the the answer is that um, probably big uint is a more uh, is a more flexible. Uh, data structure than eaters U256 because for example it can handle larger numbers that are larger than 256 bits or uh, I mean like the the fact that we are we have like some part of uh, the repository the code base that involves like Ethereum smart contract is uh, as you might have understood is not like a the core of it so the it, summa can exist and does exist even without the smart contract part and the theorem part so i think we shouldn't be too too tied to data structure that are that are based on like um ethereum data types if it does make sense yeah it, it does make sense like uh, uh i was just like um, yeah, thinking more about like um, solidity contract that you're having, like, and you cannot have like more than uh, U two five six, 
yeah, yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I think we do, use, we do use this data type when uh, when we need to post stuff um, yeah on yeah you do. i think yeah. So. Mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense like another like another thing is that like you know like some sometimes we like for example in the mercosum tree we know that the um, so if i'm not wrong in the in the Mercos, mercosum tree implementation the one that is a uh, outside of the circuit let's say the building of the mercosum tree that doesn't depend on the circuit we use the fp in the bn 254 curve as a data type so we could use we could use big integers but eventually when we are like uh when we are like parsing data inside the circuit we need to convert everything to a prime field which is that fp data type so eventually we, we 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 will always need to do this conversion so i think that's why we use this data type inside the mercosum tree instead of uh, instead of big integers but like the memory consumption is uh, is the same mm -hmm. Okay, if there are no questions, um, yeah, uh, so I, I think that fellows had been trying different tooling. So if you had any success with any tooling, please document and share. Um, you could share your README or you could do a walkthrough session. Um, I, I think, uh, okay, I think Flying Nobita had a question. I tried following the instruction to generate the contract in Sol, Solidity and in U, but U doesn't seem to generate for me. Is there something that I need to do? Okay. Mm. So first of all, like which instruction, which are the instructions that you're mentioning? Is it like the, the script inside examples or? Which instruction you mean? Uh, yeah, just just the one in the Suma book. Ah, okay. So, can you share the link? Like, what 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 is uh, the specific? Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, um, this one is from. Okay. The back end solvency. Yes, yes. Cool. So hmm. let me try. I want to run it locally because sometimes uh, you know we don't have the um, something that might be the reason of this error is that we don't have the cargo cargo lock file committed to 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 the repository so it might be the case that you are working with like dependency there are more than mine and maybe that's why you you're getting some error i want to run it locally to see if that's the case okay yeah i, no, I mean for me when i run it there was no there wasn't any errors it just seems to be doing like what it was supposed to so yeah ah, so there's no error uh, no, no, it just generated the the so far the so file like like and it was yeah. So what's the problem? Oh uh, no, so there was not the U file. I thought it was supposed to generate the dot U file as well. Ah, okay. It doesn't generate the U file. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I know why that's the case. Okay. Because like before we were uh, we were like using a, a dependency that was actually the snark verifier. 
So let me link it to you. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the previous um, yeah, solar degenerator. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was, because I actually, this is my first time running uh, the, the Halo 2, the, the, the new one basically as well. So I, I couldn't find any quick reference to the UL. So I, I couldn't, yeah, I, I tried to debug this as well, but I couldn't, but that's why I'm asking. Yeah, but yeah. thanks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, exactly. Like the answer is that as soon as we move to the, this new dependency that is called the uh, Halo 2 Solidity Verifier. So we swapped Snark Verifier with Halo 2 Solidity Verifier. I think this one is either like doing this in uh, in the background. So we, we don't have to write our own. Before we had our own wrapper that was converting Yule to Solidity. So that's why you had these two contracts. So the, the answer is that right now there's no longer the yield contract and probably we should update the the documentation every every there's no yield contract so it's like the 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 one that you're looking is like the expected behavior is just wrong uh, wrongly documented okay yeah that, that's actually what i had in mind too but uh yeah thanks for clarifying that yeah absolutely thank you Um, actually, I guess I, I have another question um, as well, um, which is regarding to um, uh, the the rain check chip, and it is that um, it was mentioned in the in the repo that you know it is uh, reference to the the Halo two gadgets in the PSE repo. At least it was it was, it was once there before they they stopped supporting it. I think late last year, um, but um, I also noticed that. Um, in the PSE one, there is also a a lookup chip, uh, as well as the the range check chip that you meant that that you referenced in the repo. Um, I, I, I so I'm not quite familiar with the way that the the, the PSE Halo Two uh, gadget works. The one to look up there. Um, I, and I was just wondering if um, I, I guess maybe maybe two parts to the question, which is like you know, first is um, is 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 the reason to not use the the one in the payload two for uh, optimization, um, or is there is it because that that chip somehow doesn't suit your use case? And, and secondly, um, I noticed that in the lookup one in the payload uh, in the PSE one, they they have a lookup and an additional gate to check the the the, the difference the, of the running sum to be calculated correctly. And I was wondering, like, you know, whereas in yours, you, you just you do it straight on the, the just a lookup, and and you didn't have an extra gate. Um, it's so so it seems like you're setting a constraint there. Is is this line of thinking correct that I have, or yeah? Yes, yes. Okay, good question. Like, uh, I'm uh, I'm not familiar with like the 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 one that you are mentioning. So like the the lookup chip or like the the one from uh, from the Halo to PSC team, so I can uh, I can uh, explain what was like our our line of thinking and how we we moved there. So, like originally our um, our rain check was a uh, was um let's say was more uh, more naive. So we would let's say we have like a. a like a, a 64 bit value or actually we have a value and we want to we want to enforce that this in the 64 bits range so what we would do before was like let's take let's split it into 8 bits chunk okay so it's it's very straightforward you have like this 64 bits value you split it into into Eight bits chunk, and then you basically multiply each chunk by. So the first one would be like the the least significant one. You multiply. You create a um a custom gate. That is like multiplying this by two to the eight. Like the first one would be like two to the eight to the 
to the zero. So multiplied by one. The, the second least significant chunk is multiplied by two to the eight. Uh, to, to the one, so two to the eight. The, the, the third one, two to the eight, to the power of two. And uh, eventually you, you add them together. So the result of this multiplication and you constrain them to be equal to the value that you are um, that you want to rain check. So if this value was higher than uh, than the um, than sixty four bits, uh, the multiplication wouldn't result in uh, in the same value. It would be like less because you cannot represent this value in uh, in chunks of eight bits. But the and of course each each chunk had to be range checked to be in a, in the eight bits range. But the problem with this implementation is that it creates a a, a very a very large custom gate because you know you need to do this thing with like the the rotation. So you know you have like to you take uh, the first. Uh, the, the least significant chunk, then you need to multiply. Then you take the the next, the 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 second least significant chunk, which is in the next row, and you multiply. Then if it's like sixty four bits, you 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 need to take a, a cell that is like a, in the eighth rotation. So it's like eight row uh, far from the the original cell that you're querying and this creates a custom gate with very large degree because you you need to multiply like the power to the the offset so like just to say that this approach was uh, was working but it was uh, it was creating like very expensive brain checks because we were doing like this very large uh, offset rotation and so in the implementation that we use now, the um, we don't create this uh, this rotation because every time we just create like a rotation to the next row, and we perform the the constraint on the um, on the difference between uh, between the well on the on the run on the running sums. So that's actually the the reason why we are using the current implementation so yes i don't know what's uh, how the the one that um, psc has is working but uh, i i think it works similarly to to the ones that we are implementing now because that was originally from their gadgets thank you yeah um no, that makes sense. I mean, I, I just posted a link there on where I saw the um, the one that I'm talking about. Just so you know, just for FYI. But but I mean, I mean, mm -hmm. I just prefaced that with saying you know what you what you uh, explained there was makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I and and then for for the link that I sent you is really just in the same folder as the decompose running some the RS file that you you linked to. Um, and I just happened to to you know by chance to come upon this lookup range. And if you click on there, you can see that it, it besides doing a lookup, it also creates an extra gate. Um, I, I, I think I, I still need to understand why they, they're doing it that way as well. Um, but but I mean, I, I, but but your way definitely, you know, you, you've explained it very well and it makes sense to me. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Um, so I saw that um, Tedda was um, playing around Halo 2 Analyzer. I think it was Tedda and Panic Error. Um, have you guys had any luck with it? Uh, did you get it working? Hey. hey. Uh, no, I couldn't, ma I couldn't make it work. And I think uh, Panic Error couldn't make it work either. It works mm -hmm. well with the 
circuits uh, that are using uh, Zcash implementation of Halo 2, but mm -hmm. it seems like PAT, like too many things have changed and uh, it doesn't seem to be adapted for it. So, so oh, I try okay. I try to change, I try to adapt it, uh, but, but it's too much of a mess. Okay. Yeah, just to chime in on, I also spent some time on it and um, I, I, it's the same thing as what Ted Dev has found basically, which is um, I, I tried using the uh, switch to the PSE and the PSE V1, mm -hmm. um, but it, it just, um, I have to import one thing after another and it's just, yeah. <laughs> um, at the end, I just sort of gave up after uh, spending a certain amount of time because because I just couldn't get it to work um, on this one, yeah. Never mind. Yeah, it happens. I, I guess one one fellow got it to work. It's zero QN. So, uh, if if zero QN could like uh document the process of how you got it working, I, I think the dev and flying Jupiter would benefit greatly from it. And um, yeah. So yeah, finally someone got it to work. Uh, and I also said that uh, Nobuto, you were you were messing around PolyXN demo, which is the tool from uh, Edward from PSC. So, how's that going? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, the 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 good news is that I did get that to work. Um, mm -hmm. it took a little bit of time because at the beginning, um, the specific commits were not specified in the instruction. So, um. And plus, uh, uh, it, it turns out. So, so the author clarified that after I asked him, and mm -hmm. then, um, then, then after some more fidgeting, I, I realized that it doesn't actually work on on an Apple, Apple Silicon. <laughs> so I, mm -hmm. I, and also, um, uh, the other thing that tripped me up was that um, it requires basically I think four independencies, uh, four dependencies, which are Halo Two, um, Halo Two Wrong, Polyxen, and uh, one more I forgot. But those actually might not come. Those didn't build correctly, even though actually Polyx and Demo did. Um, so I, I was trying to get those to 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 build, but actually it turns out I didn't need to get those to build correctly as long as the commit was correct. And then I used a, a Intel, I got an uh, an old Intel machine to to get it to to build. But um, yeah, that's when I sort of uh, had to um, uh, 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 sort of cut my time off, and 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 I did not unfortunately use the tool. Too much after that, um, but but I would um, I can post. Oh, actually, um, I, I think with those in mind, actually, just follow the repo again, and and make sure you're doing it on it on the Intel Mac. Then you can oh sorry on the Intel rather than a, a Mac. Then you can definitely uh, try to put the circuit in, which I, I'm planning to do that probably in sometime in the next coming week or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. And here was the name of the tool. It's PolyXN demo, I guess. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, it's great that you guys are trying new tooling and some of you guys have got it working. So if you could just document the whole process and share it with others, you can post it on the Suma general channel so other folks can get it running as well. And uh, uh, so if, if uh, folks here are not familiar with the tools which we just discussed right now. The first one was Halo 2 Analyzer. Uh, Halo 2 Analyzer is this tool from Quantstamp. It looks for four kinds of bugs, um, mainly under constrained cells, under constrained columns, and unused gates and columns and stuff like that. And I'm not sure what PolyXN does. Um, so if you have any idea of what PolyXN does, I think you can go ahead and explain that um, playing Nobita? Um, I, I ran the demo. Um, okay, okay. But uh, it, it worked. But okay. uh, yeah, I, I don't think I, I have too much to add to it besides uh, what it says. So I think I'll <laughs> defer my explanation if possible until the next time. Because um, <laughs> I also haven't touched on it since, um, uh, uh, I think those actually, I, I first touched on it last week. And I and mm -hmm. I sort of like chipped in my effort to on the rain check chip. Um, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, no issues at all. So yeah, I guess um, fellows can help each other and let them know what 
um, you guys are working on. Uh, so from my knowledge, I think it's like, uh, it's like a polynomial solver, and it doesn't do some something else. It just like gets you, uh, the solutions for a polynomial. Um, yeah, which which could be like a good tool, but yeah, it doesn't get you any any leads on the bugs or something like that. So yeah, that is about the two tools. And if you guys are interested in more tooling, uh, we would be really happy to fund you with a bounty or a grant. And uh, let me just remind you all about uh, what we mentioned at the beginning of the fellowship regarding um, awarding bounties to proactively taking initiatives and improve in improving the state of tooling. So for example, if you if you develop, let's say a mutation testing tool, or let's say you uh, uh, develop a tool which does safety checks for Halo 2, um, I think we would be able to fund you and um, provide support to pursue your research. So it could be um, getting people or yeah, getting mentors support here as well. So yeah, I would really encourage you all to dig in more on tooling. Um, do we have any more questions? I, I sort of have like a um, question thinking about the, the timestamp um, uh, regarding to when the snapshot is taken. Um, I, I guess my sort of, it is sort of question is like, um, is there anything that ties in with when a snapshot is taken and to sort of any cryptographic proof? Because it seems like um, there, there isn't any right now in six modeling and arbitrary um, variable that the custodian can put in, and and uh, and you know when the user the, the time when it gets used is when the user verifies the um, his or her inclusion um, proof, and that's when he needs a timestamp to get it from the smart contract. Um, and and I guess there, there the link here is uh, you know the the only link that I seem to notice is basically the 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 root. Uh, of the tree, which states the total um, uh, uh, balance, right, of the tree. Um, so sort of like, you know, if, if the time, if the, 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 the balance of the, of the exchange changes over time, then you kind of have that. But otherwise, there isn't really anything that kind of says that the, the timestamp is what it says it is. Am I understanding this correctly? Or, or am I missing something here? Yes, yes. Okay, so the timestamp is a interesting uh, interesting topic. So the, the the flow, just to give everyone context, works like this. So there's the custodian, they kind of freeze like or snapshot their database at a specific timestamp, which is defined as a Unix stamp uh, timestamp. And they will then uh, build a tree and they will publish on chain the the root of this tree containing the sum of the liabilities together with this timestamp. So let's say that the user is uh, requesting like uh, their proof of inclusion in uh, like a few days after this was published. Like if they request the, their proof of inclusion, they need to verify it against their balance that they had at the time of the timestamp. So there must be something there that uh, allows the user to, to retrieve their balance at the timestamp or 
they remind it or they note it down by themselves or the exchange should, the custodian should probably provide a sort of a, a transcript of the updates in their balance for each, like the historic updates of the balance. So that's related to how the user can, can verify it. So coming back to your question, there's no really binding on the timestamp, like the custodian can put literally whatever timestamp they want there. But the point comes again, as always, during the verification. So the, the user will be able to fetch the timestamp, somehow fetch the balance that they had at the timestamp, and then verify their inclusion proof. So if the, if the timestamp was malicious, like the user would, would, uh, would, would catch this during the the verification and there's also a topic there related to the the synchronicity between the the timestamp at which the liability snapshot was taken and the 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 on-chain timestamp which is the the block hash on which the assets snapshot was taken because you cannot find perfect synchronicity so you need to admit some some latency, some difference between between these two timestamps. And this is also an interesting topic. Like, okay, how, for example, if Bitcoin has like, a, I don't know, like 10 minutes uh, confirmation time, it can be that the, the next available block at timestamp is like 10 minutes later. So in this 10 minutes, bad things can happen. Like the exchange can probably, I don't know, put all their money on Ethereum, then move it on Bitcoin. And so this is also another topic. Thank you. Um, yeah, okay. So is anyone building a circuit visualizer? Uh, floor map for ELO2 now is difficult to analyze. So you mean floor map, you mean like the printing of the circuit? Yes, yes. Yeah, I agree that is not the, the best, but honestly, like for 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 us, it was the, yeah, it basically forces you to really understand every every single cell, what they are doing, what are like the constraints enabled there. So even if it's not the best, well, of course, tooling can improve, but for us, it was really was really helpful, honestly, to to catch things that were not working. Also, even like the the testing. So, if you go inside our our testing uh, tests folder, like you see that we basically write tests to we assert the error to a specific cell. So, by writing like by expecting an error, we can try to let's say forecast what is if this is the expected error or if there should be another error so i also i think also i encourage you to look into this test to see okay this is the error so i don't know we are like i don't know mod modifying a balance or um, adding some balance that will overflow this is the error that is generating and you see the error from the the test this kind of negative test and uh, you can assess, okay, is this uh, the expected error that I should expect from an overflow or is it something something not related? So I think this is also a good way to, to debug and to find stuff that do not work. Or you can try to do it yourself. So you say, okay, this is the, the error that I want to... I, I don't know. I you you basically you can modify a a username to generate a different hash, and then you see okay, this should result in this error. Is this the error that I see, the one that I expected? And then you can debug from from there. So to answering your question, I don't know <laughs> if someone is building a circuit visualizer. 
I'm not sure as well, but if if you guys are interested, uh, yeah, we've got support ready. It would be really nice to have some sort of an interactive version, like an interactive circuit visualizer, which like uh, gives you detailed information on the number of rows you've used and the cells, the values assigned to the cells, or um, let's say if if a region or if there is overlap between regions, or let's say if a cell is assigned but not constrained, or like really detailed values. Uh, so yeah, if you guys are interested in building, uh, we'd be really happy to support you. Like I would say that if uh, if you see the current how it works currently, you can already see if there are like cells that are assigned but not constrained. And these are the ones that are like light, light green. So I um, let me see. I don't know if I remember correctly. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, like light green means that there's a cell that is part of a region that is not part of any constraint. But I agree that like, you know, having the possibility to to see the values assigned to the cell would be like super useful. Yep. Uh, do we have any more questions? Can Enrico? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let me. I can. You can I'm do it right now. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just because yeah. I don't remember honestly how it was. But let's let's try to to do it together. Uh, I just want to because I remember that I sent something on Discord a while ago related to to this, and I want to find it because I think that was that was helpful but I don't remember what uh, mm, okay so let me share my screen maybe we can go okay hmm I don't know why this card is so slow. Uh, uh, uh. I think it was this one. Okay. So this was like advice column, fixed column, and selector column. So let's start with this one that is like a simpler. Okay. So this is the 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 um, the printing of just like the rain check. I think if you go inside the tests of the rain check circuit, but like here, this is like the the function that prints this chip as a kind of an independent circuit. So you see that we have like here. So this kind of pink part is the advice columns. So here we have like, yeah, it's difficult to tell, but I think it's probably like three advice columns. And uh, each quadrant is a, is a region. And you can see here, this is the name of the region. So assign value to perform rain check. And you see that also there is a name here that is kind of hidden by this one, but I think it should be like, I don't know, 
something like initialize some something like this so this is like the the region and uh you know like when you see that the like in lo2 you can only write constraints within a, within a reason within a region so the reason why you see that you know this same name is also applied here is because the this region assign value to perform range check takes uh, a cell inside the advice column and it takes uh, this one that is you can look from here this kind of dark purple is uh, the selector column so sorry it means that in here we are basically in this region we are activating the um, the selector here i don't know like it should be better if this grid like inside this quadrant of a region you can actually see the cell because you cannot tell like how many cells are 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 inside this region but yeah like the first thing that you, you have like a region here so this is like cells inside the advice column and this is the this is the selector column and this one in a, like a more light light blue light purple is the fixed column and uh, what is the fixed column are the fixed column used for so this is the lookup table so the range check table is a lookup table which is a fixed table and there's also here like you see something that is a bit darker so this is a constant that is assigned uh, in the circuit so a constant is like a i don't know when you if you have to check that uh, something is equal to to 20 and this 20 is like a constant uh, whatever are the inputs this 20 will be assigned uh, in this fixed table so let's see actually where is the constant in the circuit okay you see that here there's like a constant that is like a one shifted left by eight bits so this is the constant that is actually the one that is assigned assigned here just to give you uh something quick to notice here so this is a bit more complicated of course but if you like one one thing that uh is probably worth looking at so you see that there's this region called assign nodes ashes per merkle tree level and it takes some like it takes two to two rows and uh, the selector is only activated at the the first row and this cell is a, a lighter lighter green so this is not part of any of any constraint so this should probably i don't know raise an alarm or at least make you try to understand why is that the case if this is like the expected behavior and you can see that if you go inside sign no, it's not here it's in the what was the name Uh, 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 assign nodes ashes. Okay, if you go inside assign node ashes per Mercury three level region, you see that the way it works is that at the first row you have like left, right, and the swap bit. So this is, you see, like offset is zero. At offset one, we just assign two cells which are like the swapped it ashes and uh, the at offset one the self config advice column self config advice two column is not assigned so that's why this cell is actually not constrained is a uh, is part of the region because the region must be a quadrant but is not uh, is not constrained 
so that's how you should you should have a you should read this thing i lost the zoom thing okay is it clear looks like it is um are there any more questions on the print the floor graph of here too Prime field type from here to curves BM two fifty six. I was trying to use the circuit cost tool, and it seems it's currently written to be used with the pasta curves. I think he's talking about the cost RS tool, which comes in Zcash here too. Uh, I'm not sure if it's like effectively outputs the proper benchmarks. Uh, yeah, and Chico, has Soma used any benchmarking tools such as cost RS from the here to repository? Uh, Enrico, you're muted. <laughs> Yeah, no, actually, I, I don't have an answer. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but like, yeah, we are using uh, this curve that you mentioned. So it should be compatible, but uh, I'm not sure uh, why it's not working or why it's only working for pasta curve. Yeah, it looks like, like I think it, we have to check if uh, the PSC's fork supports this version. What tool like, have you used for benchmarks? Yeah, go ahead, Enrico. Yeah, yeah. Like just one thing related to the previous question, like the so there are just very few people that are using Elo tool, and uh, the good thing about that is that whenever you have to look up for something on on GitHub research, like you can use it as a basically Google, and I don't know, you look for the usage of this uh, benchmarking tool, and you find like probably five to ten repositories that are using that and you can uh, you can i don't know draw inspiration from from that and related to the benchmarks so i think there are like two different things there like you can benchmark the the speed of the of the of the of the circuit and you know we have like criterion for that but this is not a tool specific for uh, for circuit it's just like i don't know measuring how long it takes the the um, the proof function like the proof api to run i think what are you referring to is more like profiling so a way to profile the circuit like what are like the the number of columns what are like the circuit the the the, the constraint that are more expensive and uh, we didn't do this like kind of formally because it's a it's a very small circuit and uh, yeah we we basically understand the structure of this and we know what we are optimizing for so this is not really profiled in a formal way
Okay. Uh, Enrico, are you are you talking? We we don't hear you. No, no. I'm saying I think we are. There's no more question, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. I I think it's a wrap for the questions. Um. Yeah, I see that the issues are coming really well for some teams, and we really hope that uh you find all the bugs in the summer code. So, uh, yeah, if you've got any more questions, please use the Summa General channel to um, ask your questions and get it clarified. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, Enrico. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.